Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday from Google. Happy birthday to you. Good morning. It is Thursday the 14th of March and you may have realised from the Google Serenade today is my birthday. So I'm on holiday now for the next two days from work, which is great, which means I've got a lovely long weekend. So what I thought I would do is a bit of an extended, will be a vlog, but more of an extended stitch with me on my Chatelaine. So I put out, um, I sort of asked a question at the end of my last monthly update, which was the February one, what you would like to see, whether or not you wanted a vlog or whether you wanted to stitch with me. And the response came back as pretty much split, 50-50 uh, in terms of what you wanted. So I thought, right, well, if that's a response, then I'll do kind of a bit of a, an extended stitch with me over the period of maybe today and possibly into tomorrow as well. And that way I was thinking I'll be able to show you more as, as I work. So we'll probably be able to get a couple of different sections in, a couple of different specialty stitches in and, and you can see that progress rather than me trying to sit down and do an hour with you I don't think that would be of any real value so it will be more of an extended stitch with me um, so today really is a bit of a lazy day to be honest my parents are coming around later with card and present and stuff like that. Uh, nobody else will be popping in until this evening either because everybody else is at work so I'm not expecting visitors at all throughout the day which is fabulous. So yeah it's just going to give me time just to sit and and do some stuff really and I thought well what is a better way to spend your birthday than, than spending it with your chatelaine to be honest. So I thought I would I would share that with you. So I'm going to get myself organised and set up and then I will come back and we'll, we'll have a look at where I finished off at the end of last month and we'll look to get some stitches in and have a bit of a chat. So I'll catch you soon. Take care. Bye. There we go. So it's, it's all set up on the stretcher bars. Um, obviously, I use the Omnique uh, side stretcher bars. And I just got this on the needle needs frame that I got from one of the ladies at the stitching stitching retreat I went to last year, I think it was last year, yeah I think it was, so I've got all of my lovely needle minders on here, um, obviously the cross one was a new one that I showed you in my February update, so yeah, so very Tudor-esque themed which is nice because obviously this is the Royal Tudor garden mandala that I'm working on so a lot of um, nods to um, that part of our British history and then I've got my box of dreams over here so I've got my tacky bob for when I get around to my, uh, my beading I've got all of the printout so this is the colour scheme so it tells me what colours of thread and what type of thread I'm going to stitch with and then obviously how I'm going to comprise um, those stitches, so so far within this first stage, this is like a pond area that I'm stitching. It's like the water feature of the garden. We've had some rice stitches, which I'm going to be doing a few more of those today. Satin stitches, which I've already finished, but I'll show you them on the pattern. And then we've got these Dems Rose stitches, they're called here. Um, so I'm going to be doing quite a few more of those today. So we'll have a few of these going on. And then on the next section, we've got some, I think these are Algerian eyelets. Ew, do, 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 do. I don't know. Um, yes, they are. So different types of eyelets, and then some of these like little little stitches as well. I don't know what they're called. What are they called? It doesn't say. Alge I know they're Algerian eyelets, but I don't know what they're called. It doesn't say. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. So I'm quite looking forward to to digging in and seeing how much we can you know, cover off over the next couple of days. So yeah, I am going to get the camera all positioned and into, into the spot where I'm gonna be. I'm going here with Daisy. Today, excuse the garden furniture in the garden. It's, we've had a storm um, called Gareth. It's beautiful blue sky and sunshine. However, because it's so windy, and I don't know whether you can see the grass moving, you probably can, and that tree, yeah, there it goes. Um, because it's so windy that it's blowing the clouds 
and and then we get sort of areas of sunshine and darkness so I've brought in the 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 daylight lamp as well just to try and give it a bit of an extra um, push because I know how awkward and dingy it can look um, if you don't have decent lighting for these so so yeah I'm going to get myself organized and yeah we'll we'll make a go of it see you soon bye here we go I'm all set up so I just thought I would give you a little bit of a close-up as to some of the specialty stitches that have already been covered off so these are the little rice stitches that I stitched on that first ever um, sort of Chatelaine experience video there's a couple of videos I'll link for you if you didn't see them uh, I did a kit unboxing where I got all of the gorgeous threads out of the bag when I received it from European Cross Stitch so I'll link that for you below and then also um, a video where I gave my first ex impressions and experiences of working on a Chatelaine which also um, might be worthwhile going back and having a look at so I did do some of these stitches whilst I, I did that initial video where I sort of started the centre of the mandala here. I've also made some satin stitches. This is stitched in Gloriana, so it's quite, it's quite a dark colour. It's not showing dark in front of me, but I think the lighting is making it so. And then these are some of the Dens Rose stitches um, in and around here, so there's quite a lot of those. So I do have a section up in the top right hand corner that I need to go back and do all of those. Then there's some more of these rice stitches to make as we get through um, you know, this, this section. So all in all, apart from a few more rice stitches and in the top right hand corner of the mandala, let me just back up for you a little bit now. Um, so this is the area where I need to do the Dens Rose stitches and there are some more of these rice stitches in and around. I think there might be a few there. It's really only the beading and the centre section of the mandala's done. Um, so it is it does move along, you know, relatively quickly. I've not worked on this now, gosh, since I left it. God, when did I last work on this? Bear with me while I get my iPad and I'll tell you because I don't know how I haven't because, you know, this is the one thing, you know, I would really always want to stitch on. Um, what colour am I working this? I've just got my, um, my iPad. I use this tracker here on Now Then Pro. I've done a separate video of that. So it's the purple gosh here so what date was that god it was the 9th of february so this is like the week section that i worked on this so i've not stitched on this in over a month well around a month when did i when did i make my last yeah look friday the 15th of february i haven't worked on it since i then worked on uh, let me put it back to month i then worked on persephone steam heart a bit more persephone and then I've done quite a lot on Steamheart over the last month and a bit on the diamond painting as well. So yeah, this is a third of the big three. <laughs> so I do want to, over the next couple of days, like I said, get some progress in. So I'm going to reacquaint myself with the pattern, um, get my needle loaded up, and, and then I'll come back to you when I'm in a position to start stitching. So I'll catch you in a moment. I am ready. So before I continue with this I'm going to be stitching some Dens Rose stitches and I just want to show you the depth of the instructions that you get in order to complete these stitches these tell you pretty much exactly oops where you need to put your needle so I know I'm going to bring my needle up through this point come through the center this is my second stitch then I'm down into this corner here and then I'm, I'm back up to where am I going, um, here, and then I'm there and up, and then I start making cross stitches. I mean, this is so straightforward to follow. You know, I just, I just really want to encourage people to, to have a try at a Chatelaine. Um, I really, really do. So I'm going to start um, showing you how to stitch my you know the first ends row stitch so i will um i'll just get my needle sorted and i'll be back with you oh you'll never guess what i've just been recording i've been recording for about 10 minutes because i've made these stitches and then i realized i hadn't hit the record button on my camera so bear with me i'm going to just finish this one stitch here and then i'm going to come and show you 
how simple it is to do one of these dens row stitches and then I will pick up the chat um, where I where I was in the first place uh, <laughs> how blooming frustrating is that um, so yeah I'll just have to repeat myself again so yeah in that time I've stitched five stitches so anyway not that it really matters but I just want to show you how simple all of this is. So I'm now going to make um, a, a dens row stitch with you. So all I'm doing, um, just back this up a little bit, is I've got my iPad in front of me. This is, this is what I do, so it's propped up on the front. This is blown up so I can see exactly where I need to put my needle. So that's how simple I make it for myself. You know, this is pretty foolproof, honestly. It really is. All you need to do is be able to count and concentrate and you're away. Um, that's how straightforward this is. So I'm working, let me just pull this through. I'm working, as you can see, in this like block of four stitches. So these stitches cover a, a block of four and you can see how effective they are. They're just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm stitching them in this beautiful, let me back up a moment, beautiful um, Gloriana um, in Velvet Night Sky. I don't know how well this is translating on camera, but it is a beautiful, yeah, it's better, it's a beautiful blue. Um, the pattern calls for one ply of this, so that's what I'm working with for these stitches. So it's that descriptive, it tells you how many, how many plies that you need to work with, exactly what colour, and then it makes the actual stitch foolproof for you in terms of exactly where you're going to put the needle. It couldn't be more simple and it's my passion and my goal to encourage people to pick up one of these um, it really is so the first leg of the stitch comes up where I've just brought it so it's kind of in between um, the cross above it and you bring it down to center two comes right up into the corner and down into the center and then you come down into the bottom here and back through the center and then the fourth stitch comes into that bottom corner and up through the center and then you're working just on opposites so number five sits right in the middle and then you're working anti-clockwise around the clock and just filling in the rest of the stitches like that and then you're into this bottom corner up into the top left corner and around like that couldn't be more straightforward really and it's um, you know once you've done a few you get into your groove get your little groove on and then you don't really need to think about them in the way that you initially do and, and then I'm going to come into this corner here I think I've got enough thread to do another it's a bit of a push but we'll do it so up into that stitch and down three is here and then four's in this bottom corner that's my dishwasher finishing it'll probably beep at me a couple of times and then it will go quiet up to the top and then you're just literally going around anti-clockwise anti opposite to where you come up see how straightforward that is it's a really pretty stitch though I don't want to be in there move it's a really pretty stitch um, and it's a really effective as well in terms of sort of how it pulls the fibres of the fabric that you're stitching on that's how simple that is. Right, I'm just going to pause the camera because obviously I've just done several of them off camera. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to do that and then I will come back and start another couple with you. So bear with me, we'll have a bit of a chat. There we go, because I've been chatting away to myself for a while, I have no idea um, really what was recorded and, and when. Um, 
So I don't know whether or not I'm actually going to start repeating myself at this point. So if I do, I apologise. Um, there we go. So one's there. And then we're up. You just need to cross-reference a little bit, especially if you don't have like a true square to work with in because obviously you've got two of these stitches that are going to butt up next to each other if that makes sense so you can't um you just got to double check and, and just keep your counting right when you do it um because it, it would be it would be easy to miscount if you're sort of not constantly cross-referencing but you know as a cross stitcher we always are i mean i don't i don't work in grids even for the heads and um, you know the big larger full coverage I, I can't um, I don't like I don't like gridding um, my work gets lines in it so I can't so I have to stitch cross country otherwise you can see exactly where I start and finish a page I don't know what it is about my stitching um, oh hang on a minute I've put that in the wrong spot that wants to be there. So, I'm not feeling 100% today, which is a bit of a shame, as it's my birthday. <laughs> so it's Laura, isn't it? That, you know, it gets to your birthday and you don't feel fab. And, and it doesn't really matter, to be honest, because I'm not doing anything until tomorrow night. So tomorrow night is the first sort of thing for my birthday. So we've got bit of a girl's do I mean, it's not like a heavy do I mean to be honest like I'm, I'm too old to be going out on the Raz and you know I don't really drink so I'm not going to be getting drunk and ending up in bars and rolling home at daft o'clock it, it, I've done that I've been there and, and got the t-shirt on that one multiple times and yeah we, we tend to be approach things in a, in a little bit more of a mature manner than maybe we used to as, as a group of friends. So we're going out tomorrow night. We are going for some drinks and dinner, which will be lovely. And then on Saturday evening, my parents are taking me out for dinner. So that'll be very nice. I'm looking forward to that. So really, I don't have an awful lot to do over the next couple of days, which was the grand plan, really, which is why I booked the holiday. But I've come back from London because I've been away with work. Um, with, I don't know whether you can tell, my throat feels like it's going a bit and yeah, like my nose is, is a bit runny so I've just taken some um, cold relief capsules just to try and, and nip that in the bud a little bit stop it from manifesting into something worse but yeah, I'm just a little bit tired at the minute and I think it's just because I need a little bit of a break and then I think this these couple of days, giving myself an extended long weekend will will really help that. Um, so Tuesday afternoon, I drove to London, and and that wasn't too bad a drive. Um, you know, we were steady away. I did that in just under four hours, so it was okay. Um, a team meeting yesterday for the managers, which was okay you know I quite enjoyed it I'm leading on a few things so there was a lot of stuff that I'm actively involved in that we were talking about during that that meeting so that was that was good it's all exposure isn't it it's all good and then I drove back home last night so I left head office around five o'clock well just before five and I got through my door at 20 to 10 and the drive was it was rough um, let's just say that um, obviously you know I don't know British roads for anybody who lives here in the UK the infrastructure it's just not enough now we're just so heavily populated in the UK that there's just too many there's too many cars on roads that aren't suitable for, for the amount of people that are using them there just isn't and I know there's a push to use public transport and such like, but, you know, public transport in the UK isn't marvellous either. You know, the trains often don't run on time. So, you know, you're sort of in a bit of a catch-22 about, about what you do in terms of travel here. It's not, it's not great. So, so I usually opt to drive 
and um, and so do many others evidently so the journey home last night was was intense and driving I find now um, not enjoyable I know I've mentioned this in many sort of vlog type things or you know sort of stitch chatty type things I don't enjoy it and you know in the old days where people used to go out and oh let's go for a drive it's Sunday afternoon let's go for a drive out and those I think those days are long gone I it, for me I drive more out of necessity than any form of joy and I you know don't get me wrong I have a lovely car um, but even that doesn't make the whole experience fun and, and I just find people's attitude on the road very aggressive very selfish so people are always there their journey is more important than yours kind of mentality you know my needs are greater than yours I need to be there faster than you need to be there faster that kind of attitude just drives me nuts um, it, 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 it just really does um, I just I just struggle with it you know you'll get people you know the roads are merging so you've got two lanes that are merging into one it's really obvious the markers are on the road you can see the the merging arrows so people are just naturally get into the left hand lane anyway because what's the point but you'll always get some blooming fool who will come flying up that lane and then expect somebody to to have to let them in so you have to let them in which then slows down the flow of traffic because we all have to stop while that person cuts in and they've may maybe got in front of you know five or six extra cars what what difference does that make i don't understand it just it just frustrates me and it just leaves me feeling angry <laughs> I don't know it just it just frustrates me um right I just need to see where I need to be so I'm going to fasten this off at the back let me just zoom out a little bit so all I do when I fasten off is just sort of stitch underneath a few stitches let me just back it up so you'll be able to maybe see perhaps you won't I don't know um I may have backed that out for no reason but I just I just capture it under a couple of stitches on the back here um nothing fancy and then just cut the thread off there we go so let me consult the pattern and see where else we are I think there's a few more oh I think there's quite a stretch here I might do that stretch now because um, I'm just going to open up the pattern and see where I need to be and mark off the stitches that I've made so I don't I don't get lost. So I'm just going to re-thread my needles with this beautiful silk. So yeah, I just I just think that attitude. So, you know, obviously I hit the M25 at rush hour. But in all fairness, that moved along pretty well. But then I need to come off the M25 and merge with the M1, which is like the main motorway that runs up pretty much the spine of the UK and connects the south with the north. So it is, it is a bit of every man for himself while that joining actually happens. So that is quite an intense part of the journey where everybody is trying to get into lane and sort of a bit of argy-bargy goes on <laughs> in terms of, you know, people getting into the, you know, the lane. Most people wanting to get into the outside lane for some bizarre random reason that I will never understand because that, this brings me back to my other point, is you'll get people who will sit in the outside lane, um, you know, they're not doing the speed, they're not really going with the flow of the traffic. So, and then you'll get drivers who will then start undercutting. So they'll undertake. So you are in a situation where you have no idea where people are coming from so rather than constantly be watching that outside lane for people who are coming past you or attempting to get past you you're looking at the inside lane as well because you don't know if somebody's decided that they don't want to wait for a driver who's in the slow lane or the fast lane rather 
to to just keep going so they'll start they'll start undercutting so you you almost need eyes in the back of your head and it's just this aggressive behavior that I just don't get and I know I'm kind of whinging a little bit about it but it's just so frustrating um, and whilst I was you know making that journey um, so when I was driving down to London there was a massive massive accident on the northbound carriageway of the M1 so we were heading south thankfully because that tailback was miles long so those those guys caught in that were, were going to be there for hours there was absolutely no mistake about that and as I we, we drove by the actual accident site itself I've never seen so many blue lights on a road at the same time there was the fire brigade there was um, ambulances there was police cars it was just because it was dark at that point it was just blue lights everywhere and you know when it's almost overwhelming for your eyes at that point because you're trying to concentrate on the road but there's so much flashing going on it makes it really difficult to even you know concentrate and see I'm just checking you're able to follow where I am you are and um, I mean I was just saying I could zoom in anymore but I can't but the, it was clearly a really really bad accident they um, there was a car and there was it was almost flat and it clearly gone under the back of a lorry um, and they had this car in the middle of the road and the fire brigade were um, just about to start attempting to cut the roof off you know with the, the jaws of life and it was so harrowing and chilling because I cannot contemplate how the people who were actually in the front of that car could be alive with the devastation to that car. I honestly, I think, I haven't heard anything on the news, I will have to Google it later, but that has to be fatal. You know, it has to be fatal. And I, it just makes me think, you know, when you've got somebody who's undertaking and, and rushing, you know, why? Why would you do that? It is your life or somebody else's life so insignificant to you and so means so little that for the sake of maybe gaining a couple of extra minutes on your journey, you will put people at risk and yourself at risk at that level on an incredibly busy road. It just, it just boggles my mind. Um, you know, I drive a lot. I'm not saying I'm the world's best driver. I would say I am super careful on the road. I don't just drive for me. I'm always conscious of the fact that somebody could make some crazy manoeuvre and by golly they do. Um, so I drive for others as well. I'm constantly, I look right ahead of me. I don't have tunnel vision ever on a road. I'm constantly assessing what's ahead, what potential hazards there could be. I think there's many who don't do that and they're just in the now and driving for that moment. And yeah, it's it's all about defensive driving now um, and putting yourself into a position of safety when so many people aren't willing to do that. So that journey back last night was was really tough. So by the time I got in, I was exhausted. I just needed to close down all of my work stuff, turn my phone off, you know, put my out, you know out of office messages on, and and just leave it. Um, and that feeling last night of having done that. See if I can see if it'll let me zoom in a little bit further. No, it won't. Um, of having done that was just great. It was it was just the best feeling. Um, so yeah, it was great to wake up this morning knowing I didn't have to go to work. Yeah, it was it was just nice. So work has been okay. Um, 
um, I mentioned on my diamond paint with me video that I did over the weekend. Um, I know not everybody watches diamond paint with me if you're a stitcher, but that one was interesting. I got a lot of positive feedback on that. We covered some interesting topic conversations in that. I was looking for a light-hearted tag to do, and the one I found wasn't particularly light-hearted, but it did provoke some interesting conversations. So if you're looking for a tag to listen to while she's stitching away, um, have a click on that. I'll link it below for you. I'll also link my kit unboxing for the Chatelaine and my first impressions as well. I don't know whether I've already said that because I can't remember what I said and what bit didn't record and what bit did. So apologies if I've just repeated myself. Um, but I'll link those three for you because um, there was some there's some interesting topics covered. And, you know, the, the way I look at it, I mean, I'll watch Diamond Painting um, paint with me's and and stitch alongs. I like uh, the ones where people are sort of chatting away and I don't like, I don't personally watch, I know a lot of people do like them, but I don't personally watch the ones where it's either silence or, you know, they've put ambient music in. I don't see the point because when I'm watching those type of videos, I've got my head down and I'm, I'm listening to what they're saying as I stitch, if I wanted to listen to ambient music or silence, I wouldn't put it on. So, personally, I don't like those. I like the chatty ones. And um, But we did cover off some interesting conversations and I got some good feedback on that. It was quite thought-provoking. So if you want to be um, thought-provoked, then have a, have a watch of that one. Um, but I mentioned in it that I had a coaching circle with work. So we're working with... Um, group called Cambridge who were linked to Harvard Business School and I don't know whether you can hear Daisy snoring she's right next to me she's absolutely zonked and we're working with um, a group of guys on a different style of coaching of talking with each other and it's called leadership conversations and it's basically like the psychology behind what you say and how you say it really. And I was selected to be a master coach. Um, so I get to coach my fellow managers on this topic area. So I had um, a, what we call a coaching circle on Monday. I had my first one where I sort of take charge and, and get people to think about how they do things and maybe try different things and sort of lead that change and yeah, it was it was really, really good actually. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm just going to switch that off because that's the pattern. Not that you can see much, but tie off this thread and put another one on. And uh, yeah, it was it was just it was just good to do it. Um, you know, it lasted an hour and a half, it was incredibly intense, you have to listen like crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we got the I think I moved the guys to a good place. It went well, I'm looking forward to my next one. So, yeah, I was really nervous though before I did it. I was glad it was done. I'm glad, you know, it's sometimes good to get the first one done and out of the way, isn't it? Because nothing can ever be as bad as that again. <laughs> so I'm just um, threading a new, a new thread. And then on Tuesday, um, I had a lot of admin to do in the morning. And then I was driving down to the office for the manager's meeting yesterday. Back home and here I am. So... It's been a mega busy week, so a lot crammed into three days. <laughs> Feels like a week of work, but um, mm. it was good. I'm back, it's about quarter to three, so I took Daisy for a really nice walk actually. Um, you know when you just feel as though you need a bit of fresh air? So yeah, the wind definitely blew all of the cobwebs off. So I'm now going to make um, some of these rice stitches again. Um, we have some MPI silk, so this darker thread makes the kind of, I guess, structure for the little rice stitches. That's more of the colour that you can see as I stitch that over. And then the centre little cross is made up of some petite treasure braid. Um, so that's PBO2 to go in the middle of it just to add that little bit of bling. So there's basically, in each of these 
four corners, four here, four here, four along the bottom and, and vice versa. So what I'm going to do is just stitch with you at this point the, these four. I think um, we'll, we'll do those together at this point. So I've got my, again, iPad set up so I can see where the underlay under sort of underneath layer goes and then I know how to make you know with it with the extra extra colors on top you know where to stitch so that sort of really graphically shows you <coughs> where you need to bring your needle up and where you need to put it down in order to do it so just again to reinforce how you know not easy but you know straightforward this is so the first thing I'm going to do is just take some of this MPI 487 which is this dark teal colour it's gorgeous it's, um, you can't see a lot of this colour underneath the stitches really just enough I think just for you to know it's just about there <laughs> so I'm going to thread my needle I'll keep that little bit for later I don't think that will be enough will it be enough for these first four yeah let's not push it um, I tend to work with fairly short lengths of thread. Um, I tend not to go too long, it, it gets knotted and, and just generally makes it a bit unweirdly to work with. So I'm just going to loop this over one of my needle minders um, for later and then thread up my needle. There we go. So I'm just going to attach this onto the back. So if I just stick that there, I know roughly that's where I'm going to be making my first stitch. And then all I'll do with this is just literally attach it a couple of times on the back. The back's relatively neat. Um, you know, I tend not to beat myself up about the back of the work. Yes, I could make it incredibly neat and, you know, I do carry threads sometimes, but I'll only carry them where I know that you're not going to be able to see through the design, otherwise I'd I'd finish it off sooner, you know. So it, it doesn't really matter if it, a little bit of it carries. So the first leg, so this is like the structural under support, comes down there. And let me zoom in a little bit for you. Let me just pull that down a little bit. Nothing worse is though on the stitch with me when you can't see what somebody's doing. That's okay, we're in shot there. Up there. And then there's a new one which comes in down here. Hang on a minute. I'm just follow, I will follow it fanatically because I was just about to just make a random cross in the way that I would normally do it but that's naughty and I'm not going to do that because if it tells you to do it a specific way I'm going to do it the right way just make sure that I'm putting that in the right spot the third one comes up there and across down there this is completely the opposite to where to how I would cross stitch, which is why naturally. I mean, I don't know whether or not it would make any difference really if you were just to stitch it your natural way, but you know, in the interest of making sure I do do this properly, I'm not going to deviate from the pattern. You know, I'm not that good where I can just think, oh well, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's just pull in a little bit there. Let me just lift it. All these other areas have actually got like beads in of some nature. So I'm looking forward to beading at some point. I'll probably do a separate upload on that. I get asked quite a bit um, from people about how I bead and stuff like that. So I'm just going to back the camera back up again. And then I'm just going to flip this over and I'm going to fasten off this colour at the back because that's all I need of that for now. And then obviously I will come back to that as I stitch the other sections in. <coughs> Trim that off. Over we go. Oh, such a pretty color. 
colour. I love that. I love teal and um, purples and blues. Just snag that on my needle. Let me just try and remove this thread. It's just twisted through itself. Come on, thread. There we go. Right, now I'm going to thread on. Put that on my needle minder. I have a choice, don't I, of where I stick that? <laughs> I do like needle minders. I get a few people ask me, oh, you've got needle minders on and then you stick your needle through your fabric. I do it um, because of Daisy. Um, Daisy has a habit, I've explained this a couple of times to people, of when she's playing, um, she throws her toys, like she'll literally like fling her head back with something in her mouth and release it and it goes flying over the top of her head and you know no amount of needle minder uh, and, and magnetism is going to stop um, a toy hitting the needle and we've had situations where I've lost a couple of them and to this day I've never found them so I've no idea where they are and, and obviously I'm super cautious of Daisy getting them stuck um, in her feet, uh, paws rather and you know and you know hurting herself or worse still you know managing to eat it so I, I am really really careful so I'm aware of you know, rusting and things like that. I do have an old project that I did show, gosh, many moons ago about what was in my, you know, old stitchy box and I got out Mirabilia's Winter Queen and sure enough, she's got rust all over her because the needle's gone rusty. But, you know, these projects, oh, my needle doesn't thread it itself. These projects aren't around long enough um, or not worked on enough for that rusting to happen or at least it's not happened in the projects that I've worked on. So yeah, I appreciate the concern, but th there is a reason behind it. <laughs> so let's zoom in and work out where we are with these stitches. So I did do some of these on my first ever Chatelaine type stitch with me. So let's see if we can remember how this happens. So I have a stitch that comes up there. I hope you can see this okay. I think you can. And then another one that comes down that way. And into the midpoint. Right, so that's seven, eight. Nine starts there. Nine and ten. Eleven and twelve. Thirteen, fourteen. Fifteen, sixteen. There we go. And the same thing up in that top corner and that sews legs in so we'll repeat exactly the same down here it's all repetition when you've done them a few times you get yourself into like a little you know flow I was just thinking as I was taking Daisy for a walk that I'm hoping I don't repeat myself through this vlog because it's going to be over an extended period of time you know I want to apologize in advance if I tell you the same thing twice <laughs> Because <laughs> I forget what I've, I've just told you in the previous section. I will get up and close that door in a in a moment because the birds are in. They're in full full force with their singing and chatting away. There we go. So plans for this weekend. So I do have some obviously, with it being. Sorry, Daisy's just laying in my box of delights over there so she's got a face stuck into my beautiful threads luckily they're all in floss away bags so there'll be no damage done <laughs> but yes with it being my birthday I do have plans nothing during the day as such unless you know somebody comes visiting but tomorrow night I am out with the girls 
So it'll just be going for some drinks, some nice uh, wine bars around where we live. So we're going to go and do that. There's a nice, a really nice town. It's, I mean, it's a nice area. I mean, it's not a market, but it's one of the more upmarket areas around where I live. Let's just say. So we're going there tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow night because that's Friday. Um, it's not like a full-on boozy do. We used to do that. Oh my God, when we were younger, yeah, we were we were terrible, like right beer monsters. But I can't, I don't drink really now at all. I can't take it, so I just I just don't. <laughs> Actually, you can see this per, um, teal a little bit more than you can on some of these other eye stitches here. I don't know whether you can see. I think it's just the fact that I've worked these on a a horizontal and these are more diagonal that that darker color shows actually so that's actually quite nice because I do really love the the dark the dark teal shade so we are having some drinks and dinner and um, I'm looking forward to that to catch up with the girls um, I've not we've not been out together for a little while so it'll be nice to see how everybody's doing we're all really busy you know how just life gets in the way then a couple of the girls have family and you know I'm not the only one who doesn't have kids and I'm not the only single one within the group um, a couple of my friends I think I've mentioned in previous uploads are going through separations and divorces and yes yeah, so we've got you know quite a bit going on as a group of friends and then on Saturday night my parents are taking me out for dinner, so dieting may go out of the window a little bit this month, uh, this week rather, unfortunately. So that's that little bit, so I'm just going to zoom out. You can see how straightforward these are, can't you? And then I'm going to put the centre gold bit in, which is just literally two, two strands. I'm just making a, a cross <laughs> in, the, in the other direction. Um, just to add a bit of bling and a bit of sparkle to that and then I'll just be repeating the same thing in the other corners. Alright, I'm just going to put that over the needle minder. I'm going to take off my, um, let me zoom that out a little bit for you, my petite treasure bread. I've enjoyed working with Petite Treasure Bread. Um, it, I used to use, or I generally would use, um, Krennic, Krynic, depending on how you want to pronounce it. I know Krynic's a proper way of, of saying it. I'm going to leave it about there. I'm not going to take too long a piece. But Krynic is, oh gosh, I find it quite difficult to use it. Um, splits, it tangles. It unravels on itself. Um, it's generally quite a tricky thread to use where I found Petite Treasure Bread to be, I don't know, just a, not a higher quality because it, it's not even about, so I'm just trying to thread the needle. I'm just saying how great it is and I can't get it through the needle. Um, but just a different, I'm going to, let me just trim that off with my scissors. It's easier to thread if it hasn't had a chance to start to unravel. There we go. It doesn't, um, it doesn't sort of unravel and split and twist in the way that I feel as though the, the, the crinic, crinic actually does. So I'm just going to fasten this onto the back. Oh, sorry. Let me give you a bit of a knock there. There we go, just like a couple of loop stitches. And then we shall make the last leg of these. There we go, let's pull it over a little bit for you. Too far. That should focus. Yeah. All right. So we're just in the very, very centre now of that cross. So that one comes straight over the top, like so. 
That's so pretty. It's so pretty. And then like when you pull it, it's almost like these little center bits pop, pop out. It almost gives it a bit of a 3D dimension. These rice stitches are so pretty. I don't want to put too much tension on it because, um, you know, it can almost disappear on itself really and, that, and that's not the purpose. You want to, you want to be able to see it. And tuck that little stitch in there. But how, how effective is just that very little, you know, stitch that you think, oh gosh, who, would, who wouldn't know if it was there or not? But that it does make such a difference. Did I forget to go over the top? Did I do that? I think I did there, you know. There we are. How nice are they? Cool. There you go, rice stitches. So we've had, so far, we've had Den's Rose stitches. We've had these really pretty rice stitches. Um, I am going to finish the other sets of four off camera because, you know, you've seen some now. And then we're gonna come back and I think we'll do the Algerian eyelets that go around part of the edge here. So I will love you and leave you for a few moments and get on with the rest of it. And I'll come back when I'm ready to pick it up. See you in a bit. Hello. All of that's done now. So I've got all of these extra rice stitchy sections finished. So it didn't take too long. Um, maybe under an hour. It was under an hour to, to do that. So now <laughs> all the way around the edge, there are some exceptions are Algerian eyelets and they're to be stitched with this gorgeous emerald colour water lily thread which oh my gosh it's so exciting let me just back it up a little bit um, so yeah it did say two plies I'm pretty sure um, these have worked with two piles plies <laughs> piles of WL65 which is obviously this one here so not worked with um, I don't know what I used a water lily on this yet I can't remember honestly can't remember um, might not have so I'm just gonna take it off its little card and you can see I hope you can see so the hand dyed um, elements of the thread it's it's really nice um, I'm acutely aware, what time are we on for? I don't think I'm not expecting anybody yet, but um, it might limit the amount of time I can work on this. So probably what I'll do is is do the eyelets because um, obviously when people start to come visiting, I'm not going to be able to stitch. So, you know, what we don't finish today, we'll pick up with tomorrow. Um, because obviously I do want to progress with this centre mandala over the, the course of these next couple of days. And then, um, you know, we may look at beading at some point. I don't think I'll bead on this particular upload. I think that will be a separate one. I get a lot of people asking me how I bead and, and such like. So I'll probably do a separate upload for that. Somebody did mention to me as well um, you know, how will I protect the beads if I bead at this point? Because I probably will. I'm not going to just leave it. I'll probably start beading. And it's, you know, it's relatively straightforward. I mean, these, they will sit. Okay, I'll probably put a piece of felt over the areas that are going through um, the sort of rung areas or the button against the wood, so to speak just to, you know, give it a bit of padding. Um, many people have seen stitch chatelaines on, uh, on some sort of frame and don't have any problem as the bead with them cracking. So, I mean, I'm gonna do it that way. I don't know if everybody else does, but that's the way that I'm gonna do it. So I've got two plies here. I'm just gonna open them up and lay them 
side by side against each other just so there's no twisting and it might lay nicely. And then I'm just going to thread my needle. Get everything lined up, obviously with it being hand dyed you want to make sure that everything sort of does line up just to get the variegation effect as you as you stitch so I'm going to attach this up at the top here and then we'll do some eyelets together I have stitched eyelets before um, I have done some black work so I did start it's not finished but I did start on oh gosh I don't even know if you'll remember it Liz Armand's Save the stitches that I was doing on the black fabric, which is really tough to stitch on, actually. <laughs> so I, I am familiar with Algerian eyelets because there was a fair few of them on that particular pattern. I'm just going to pull this in a little bit further because I'm right on the top of um, where I'm stitching. Let me just move the light a little bit and get a bit of light on the situation. And I'll zoom us in. So again, um, I've got my big blown up image of an Algerian eyelet um, in front of me and I'm just going to follow that. I mean, as I said, I've stitched these before, but I'm not necessarily saying that I stitched them right. <laughs> um, because obviously at that point I'm doing my own sweet thing, um, working on Liz Armand's pattern. So, you know, I don't know, we'll see. Um, the effect of these is gorgeous though. Um, I do love an Alg Algerian eyelet, I have to say. And as you work them, what you're aiming to do is open up that center hole, this one here, um, and it gives it a really nice sort of, it looks like a little flower, I think. As it starts to sort of split away. You'll see it when I've um, done a completed one, how it sort of works. And you haven't said that, you know, because you need tension on this last stitch here. I think I'm going to stitch the other way to what I was thinking because if I, see what I mean here, how good that looks. If I take my thread that way, it's going to cover the hole, so I need to pull to the left. So I'm going to stitch um, that way around. I was going to go in a clockwise manner, but I can't because of the way this thread sits, this, this one here, if that makes sense to you. Um, so I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. That looks pretty. It is like um, a treasure trove of wonder. And that's what I really like about this. I mean, not that I've, you know, this is my first ever Chatelaine. And what I really do like is the variety of, you know, what, what happens. Um, now we're moving in a different direction. I'm just going to alter the camera for you. Um, It's just the variety, the different threads, you know, the fact you're introducing something a little bit different every time just makes it, you know, really appealing to do. Very nice change from the usual cross stitch, which I do love, absolutely. Yeah, that's sitting okay. It wouldn't have though. <laughs> Just little things to be mindful of, isn't it? You know, you want to leave those, all of those holes open. That's the effect, an eyelet, evidently. It's got an eye in it. Um, that's the whole point. Obviously these have only got, how many? Six spokes, yeah, seven spokes. Sometimes you can, put extra ones in between. Some patterns do that. I think my Liz Armand one had um, 
more of them they were denser let's just say there we go so these are nice stitch so there's a another specialty stitch so we've had dendro stitches we've had um, rice stitches we've got Algerian eyelets now there you go three specialty stitches so far right I'm just going to consult the pattern and just work out at what point this changes up slightly because I know from um, looking at this something happens a little bit different and I think it's at this point here so pleasant. I find it so therapeutic. I almost left it in silence there as I'm doing it but these are so nice to work on. You know so you tell me what's like excessively complicated in any of this and that you wouldn't be able to do it because it isn't is it? I tell you what it does look nice so I do like it. So yeah I'm still on my diet the weight loss is going really well still. I'm really pleased with it. I've lost half a stone so far on the Weight Watchers and that has made a massive difference in terms of how my clothes are fitting. I think I've said this as like the weight's gradually started to come off. I'm not losing excessive amounts of weight per month. It's working out just over a pound a week at the minute, um, which is good with obviously the exercise within that as well, which helps. Um, but yeah, no, no, I can really feel a difference. I, I look better. I feel better. Um, it, it's making such a difference because the aim is to make sure that that weight stays off when I've achieved the weight I want to. I'd like to, I think, maybe lose another half a stone, so a stone in all, and then I'll feel really comfortable. And then we'll just reassess. Sorry, I've just come up through one of the, um, I've done it again, <laughs> I'm just trying to backtrack here without taking it off the needle, I've, done, I've like split a stitch, oh, it's not letting me, it's okay, it's not the end of the world, it's not worth fighting over I don't think, um, so yeah, so if I could lose a stone in all, I would feel a lot better, there we are, my, my needle's just slipped out of the thread now, I was going to reattach my needle. Probably that's going well. The exercise is going well. I'm totally enjoying that Peloton app. Oh my gosh. I absolutely love that. There's so much stuff in it. I've told you about it before. If you're interested in exercise, um, you have access, access to a, a bike and a treadmill or you can run outside or you want to do a bit of yoga or some meditation even. It's a fab website. Um, it's got so much in. Um, it's a really, really good digital platform. I'm really enjoying it. Um, so yeah, so all of that's going really, really well. I uh, couldn't be happier at the moment. So, so yeah, we do have um, some change coming with work though, I'll tell you about because obviously I'll keep you updated as that happens. So the company I work for has decided to acquire another company. So there is uh, an acquisition going on. Um, it's still very much in the phase of the shareholders and making decisions. Obviously, I'm now a shareholder. Um, following on from my performance review, I was given stock in the company that I work for, um, which was you know, a really nice thing to receive um, based on my performance. So, um, yeah, so so basically they've acquired another company. They sell um, a product or a, a group of products that are similar to what our company has. I sell in a different 
therapy area to to the company who have acquired but we do have that therapy area within our organization as well so you know there's two companies coming together later on in the year I would imagine you know we will face a degree of change um, from a, a restructure perspective I don't know how that will affect the team that I'm part of I think we would be naive to think that there wouldn't be a complete restructure meaning that there might be a possibility that I have to you know apply for it wouldn't be my job but a job potentially of a higher level I could be up against um, a direct competitor from the other company that we're acquiring so I think the way to approach something like that is you know, it could bring opportunity, you know, and, you know, I've gone through situations like this in the past. I've always been very lucky. I've always managed to retain my job. And, and I just think, you know, those people that do tend to survive, you know, takeovers and mergers, you know, are generally the ones who sort of crack on and just do the very best that they can do. And that's obviously what I intend to do. I'm just fascinating this thread off let me zoom it a bit further out so no you won't be able to see what I'm doing apologies because I'm down in this corner um but just really to keep doing what I'm doing and make sure everything is as it should be I've put myself into a a good position within the team I mean I do know from the point of view of the conversation I had with my manager as she talked me through my pay rise. I mentioned this in my stitch with me, but I mean, sorry, diamond paint with me. Uh, she talked me through my pay rise and then obviously the fact that she was awarding me stock in the company, which is, you know, great to have shares in the organisation you work for. You know, it's a, a long-term investment. You can cash them in as and when. Do, do you know what I mean? It's, it's good to have. Um, I do know that I'm in the top two out of our manager team of 10, which again is a, is a good position to be in because some of those managers have been managers longer than I have. I mean, I've been a manager for 10 years, but some of these guys have done it for, for donkey's years and have been with the organisation for many years. So I do know that I'm in a good position at least. Um, if you know I'm up against somebody else for a, a position so you know it's it's kind of whatever will be will be isn't it and you know I'm just going to continue as as usual I'm just fascinated in this new thread bear with me because again you won't be able to see this so I, d I don't know you know we might have some change at your end but you know things happen for a reason don't they I'm not going to to stress about it too much I do need to I do have money put aside but I just need to make sure I've got sufficient funds um, put away just in case um, I do need a good slush fund just in case I am made redundant I mean I will be given a package but I've only been there for four years so it won't be huge um, so I just need to make sure that if I am in a position where I'm looking for a job I can support myself um, because obviously I depend on me don't I being the independent woman that I am, so <laughs> there isn't anybody else to bail me. <laughs> but hey ho, them's the breaks, isn't it? So that's what's happened in my life. So yeah, a lot of good stuff, a lot of positive stuff, a lot of potential change potentially on the horizon. But we'll see how that goes. But I think this whole section now, as I work down, is all of these Algerian islets. So what I think I might do is just continue to do this, because I'm sure you've seen enough of these and you've got the gist about how an islet works by now, haven't you? Um, so I don't want to labour the point. I think you can see exactly how they work, how effective they are as well. I love the bit... I don't know whether or not you can see it on camera where the little centre bit opens up. I think that's so cute. I really do think that's cute. Um, this colour looks fab against the... Um, what did I stitch this other shade in? I think it's Gloriana. This bit here, like the, the gaps in between. 
Um, it's really variegated, but this dark green looks so pretty against that. It's beautiful. But yeah, I think I'm going to just continue to work on these for now and, and work my way around. I don't know how much more I'll get done before I get visitors, which I am massively looking forward to. <coughs> um, it'd be so nice to to catch up with people today. And um, so yeah, I may get back on today or it could be tomorrow when I rejoin you um, for more specialty madness. So I will say goodbye at this point and um, yeah, as I said, I may see you a little bit later. If not, I will catch up with you tomorrow. Take care. See you soon. Bye.